This week, we're going to look at cars that were way too high and ones that were a heck of a bargain. I want to thank you for joining me today. If you enjoy this content, please like the video. If there's things that you want me to cover, please mention that in the comments below. And we're going to jump right into the auctions today. All right, we're going to jump right into the auctions today with this 2000 BMW M5. This thing looked just stunning. Black cars always look amazing when they're completely detailed. You just don't want to maintain them that way. Uh, but this was done up by the guys at Ammo, it looks like. And, and uh, they did a great detailing job inside and out. Uh, all the pictures on this look phenomenal and it just uh, looked like a photo shoot. This car was in great shape. I want to jump over real quick and take a look at some of the auction results that happened on Bring a Trailer. Now this auction was on Cars and Bids, but Bring a Trailer has a little bit better access to some of the information from a historical perspective on sales. And you can see this goes all the way back to 2015 and 80,000 on this car basically represented a top six result. This was a great sale and I think they got all the money on it. And whoever bought it got a phenomenal car. 23,000 miles. This thing's like new. All right, we're going to jump into another BMW. We've got a few today, but uh, this one is a heavily modified 2000 740, although it's not really a 740. It has the exact same engine from our previous auction, that M5, that 2000 M5. This has the same engine in it and six speed in it, and it was completely modified so that. It's just going to be a better 7 Series, in my opinion. This is the way that you wish that they would have come from the factory. So this is a great auction. Had a bunch of miles on it. I say a bunch. It's a 2,000 car, right? So it's not a bunch. But had 150,000 miles on it from a chassis perspective. I'm not sure how many miles the engine and transmission had on it. But those things are pretty solid. And uh, this would have been a fantastic 7 Series Uh these are relatively small compared to today's 7 Series. This would be a fun car out cruising on the road, going to work, whatever the case may be. All right, now we're going to jump into a car that I had, or I had one relatively similar to this. So this is a GT350R from 2019. I had a 2016 GT350, no R, and it was the orange color. I, I love that car. It was a phenomenal car. I've been wondering what was going to happen with pricing on the GT350Rs. There was a little bit of a package difference, wing as well as interior where they have the rear seat delete, and a few other things that you could get on the R that you couldn't get on the regular GT350. And so I've been wondering what prices were going to do way back when, uh, when they first came out. The R's were getting tremendously high prices compared to the GT350. And so you were just far better off if you just wanted a driver to get the regular one, not the R. So now they're coming down, and so I think this is pretty fair I'd guess this is probably $10,000 over what you would pay for a GT350 that was equal. This one has a thousand miles on it, so it's mostly new, right? But it's a 2019 car, so uh, good buy and a good car and a ton of fun and you can track them and you can have a great time with these cars. Definitely something that I wouldn't mind driving again. All right, now we're gonna hop into a car that was a dream car of mine as a kid. And uh, so I graduated high school in the 80s and this car was so cool back then. You had the AE86s and then you had these and, and there was various other cars, but this was one of the ones and there was a girl in my school who had a Mitsubishi Starion that was completely decked out and it was white. And I just lusted after that car. It was just a fantastic car. This one went up for sale. And this is one of those few times where I'm gonna mention a car that didn't sell, uh, which I usually mention about one a week. And this is gonna be the one. It was in really good shape, but I don't think that was completely optimized with the modifications. And uh, if you want, you can go to this auction and look at the comments and, and look at what was said. but. It wasn't making all the horsepower that it probably should have made with the modifications that were on it, but everything was there. So I think a little bit of love and care on this car and it would have been phenomenal. Uh, there was no sale, uh, but it was in great shape. The interior was in good shape. Everything on this car was in great shape. This is uh, the era where they had the weird seat belts that were on the A-frame, the A-pillar. 
Uh, and uh, <laughs> nobody cared for those things. I know I didn't. Anyhow, so this was a, a great car, and unfortunately it didn't sell, but maybe it's an opportunity for somebody else down the road to get this car. I just want to take a look at the commensurate prices for the sales that have happened on these Conquest Starians, and you can see how they are around anywhere from 18 for good examples all the way up to 25 and then there's a few that have sold higher than that but this just came in underneath the range at 17 but i think that probably around 20 it should have sold around 20. anyhow it didn't and i think there's an opportunity down the road for somebody all right now we're gonna jump into a ford lightning the modern version of the Lightning, not the cool one when I was a kid. So the 2022 F-150 Lightning, this truck had 3,700 miles on it. And as you can see, it looks as new, right? This one, the MSRP on this, I looked at it was $79,000. So this vehicle sold after the auction. So we're not real sure what it sold for, but it sold after the auction, probably in the 70, $71,000 range. I doubt that somebody went much higher than that. So this sold for eight grand less than MSRP, which I think is a decent result for a used car in today's world for low demand. So these prices have come down dramatically. You can remember when these were getting over a hundred and so now prices are kind of coming back a little bit to normal. There's a few examples of vehicles and we're going to show a couple where the prices were way out of touch with where I thought reality was, but uh, I don't set prices, the market does. And so um, this is a good example of where things are coming down and it's a little bit of a, I wouldn't call this a deal, but it's more reasonable. All right, now we're going to transition over to our bring a trailer auctions. Before we do that, thank you for joining me today. And uh, hopefully we have some really cool stuff coming up down the road. And if you subscribe to the channel, you will not miss it. All right, now we're gonna hop into those auctions on Bring a Trailer. The first one's a big one. And when I say a big one, I mean it's a big one from a result perspective. So this is a 93 Corrado. I had a I had an older Scirocco back in my day and I enjoyed that car and I always wanted a Corrado, but it was just out of reach at the time. And so this is the one that I would have wanted. And uh, so a Corrado VR6, uh, with a five speed, this thing only has 47,000 miles on it. Now, you'll see this price, 45 grand on this car. So I'm when I first saw this, I'm like, that is a high price for this car. And I had no idea how right I was. So if you take a look at the chart on this one, and this is just bring a trailer, right? But this represents the highest price for Volkswagen Corrado ever on bring a trailer. At 45 grand, it wasn't even close. Second place was 37, I believe, 36,000. And so, and that was a lower mileage one. This was presented very well and it got quite a bit of activity uh, and it got the number one result. And so pretty cool in that regard. Um, tons of pictures on this. It looks like it's new and uh, or close to it. And so really cool. Another car, by the way, with the seat belts. Uh, coming up the a pillar so all right now we're gonna hop into something a little bit different and so <laughs> or a whole lot different and so this is suzu elf camper this was really cool and this is another one of these imported japanese vehicles that have been brought over and are selling on the market now uh, this one had 58,000 miles on it which is really low mileage and it was set up in a pretty cool manner from an off-grid perspective. It had a little bit of battery. It had a little bit of a solar panel. Nothing crazy, but a good setup nonetheless. And if we'll just go ahead and look through some of these pictures on the interior, you'll see that it was set up pretty neat. Had a nice little dinette there and kitchen, refrigerator, and it had some AC inside the vehicle as well. And so this is a cool camper and it got 30,000. The RV market has taken a heck of a beating. This represents a pretty good sale in my opinion at $30,000. And so um, this little niche might be doing okay for these Japanese campers that are coming over. And uh, this might be a little bit of an outlier from an RV perspective. The higher price Sprinter vans and that type of thing are really taking a heck of a hit right now though. All right, now we're gonna hop over onto a different auction. The one that was very significant for the Bring a Trailer family 
And when I say family, I mean the actual company, Bring a Trailer. And so this was lot 100,000 and it was the Bring a Trailer 240Z. And so this was their actual car. They've driven it around the country. They went to different events with it and done different tours with it. And, and they've done a lot of things with this car. And so they auctioned this car off and you can see it got a tremendous amount of activity, 894 comments, which is out there. And, and, uh, and it got $124,240. And, and uh, all of that goes to the Piston Foundation, I believe was the charity for this, including the buyer's fees. This is essentially setting up a scholarship for the amount of people that they can fund off of the $124,000. So I think this is a pretty cool auction, pretty cool charity and they got a really good result. All right, now we're gonna hop over into a little bit of a different car and one that I haven't covered too much on here. And so this is an Aston Martin V8 Vantage. And so this auction in particular interested me because it was a very different color combo. This car went for $85,000. And I've looked at a lot of the Aston Martin V8 Vantages and this being the GT Coupe, so a little bit more desirable. And of course with the six speed. So this had a different color com combination than many of them, and it went for about $20,000 more than a standard Skyfall silver or commensurate color that's a little bit more common. That's interesting, especially for this, and especially for a $20,000 surcharge. If you want a standard color for Aston Martin V8 Vantage, which is super cool and they sound awesome, you can get a deal when you get a standard color on these. All right, now we're going to hop back into another BMW. And so this, in this case, it's a Touring. And I think that it's going to be pretty interesting. And so this had the S50 in it. This one is a very unique car. It had the throwing star wheels on it. And it looked fantastic. And so it was presented really well. It was in great shape inside and out. And I'll go down so that we can take a look at some of the interior photos. So tan leather interior. It looked great. And it had some blemishes, obviously. It's not a new car, but from a from a touring perspective with a good engine, stick shift in it, it went for 23 grand, and I think that that's a pretty decent result. And I think you could say that it was well bought and sold. And so, but I wanted to just briefly touch on another touring that sold, and that was this M5 touring. And so these were hard to get. And this is a Euro spec, and you can see that it went for 38 grand. And so quite a bit more than the 525i Touring with the engine swap. This car, really cool, same wheels. It looked fantastic, it had a lot of miles on it for one of these cars, and they're certainly capable of it, but at 142,000 miles on it, it was a fair amount of miles on this car. I think that this was presented well also, and it looks like it's in great shape and it was probably a fantastic buy and whoever gets this is going to be very happy as well you can see the interior still looks quite nice and so it was taken care of through its ownership all right now we're going to hop into what i consider to be one of the highest overpriced sales of the week and that is this 911 gt3 touring six speed that was a paint to sample color which was this British racing green and it had a different interior in it as well and it looked striking. And this was a car that MSRP'd for about 215. Most of the time GT3 Touring 6 speeds go for around 185 I believe on MSRP and so this one was considerably more than that so it was a highly optioned car. You can see it had the front axle lift system, extended range fuel tank, and then it had all the standard you know things that you would get with this but the paint the sample and the custom interior with this uh, cognac exclusive manufacturer leather uh, all of that was different and those were in additional options that took this thing up to 215. now look at the sale price at 340 so they normally sell for 250 50 ish 225 to 250 is what gt3 tourings are going for and this one went for 340 you could say that 100 over msrp would be one thing but this thing went for 125 over msrp and so 
Um, everybody loved the color on this. There was a lot of comments of people saying that they were going to go paint their GT3s British Racing Green so they could get a result like this. And, uh, it's a little bit high in my opinion, or maybe a whole lot high in my opinion. And uh, But nonetheless, they loved it and they bid on it and somebody's going to pay $340 for this car. All right, that does it for the auctions today. So really interesting week, I think. And so we're seeing some of the fallout from what we talked about in the last couple weeks where we see some prices in the market going up and we see some prices going down depending on where it is. You know, if you're looking for a touring car, like the BMWs that we looked at today, those are getting decent prices. If you wanted a deal, uh, there's some BMWs out there as well as some Mercedes that are out there that are some pretty decent deals. And so you can get them. You just have to kind of look a little bit and wait and be patient. 911s, they're going up. Uh, the 911 GT3 Touring that we looked at, obviously that's in bonkers land as far as I'm concerned. Um, but if you have the money and you want it and it's the color you want, then uh, you know that's the way to go, I guess, instead of waiting a year and a half. Um, I'd rather have the 340 for that car, but, but uh, nonetheless. So there are prices that are just shooting through the roof. And then we see this area where there's some opportunity out there. And, and uh, you know, some of the older Mercedes coupes and convertibles and those types of things, those look like pretty good deals. And thankfully, we see some falling prices on some of the standard production vehicles, whether it be Ford F-150 Lightnings or standard GT350s or whatever the case may be. It looks like we're seeing some normalization in the market. Uh, we still have the RVs where they've fallen tremendously. So there's opportunities out there with those as well. All right, that does it for today. I want to thank you for joining me. And uh, I think we had some cool representative auctions of both sides of crazy high and bargains. And so if there's things that you see coming up that you want me to cover, please send those over or put them in the comments section below and I'll make sure that I take a look at those for this upcoming week. And uh, we'll see you out there in the next one.